Assalamu alaikum, hello everyone, welcome to the video. I'm gonna solve some topical questions, paper 4, topic 2, experimental techniques. This is IGCSE chemistry, so let's begin. First question here, this is state the name of the process that is used to. The first one, um, the process that is used to separate oxygen from liquid air. Um, actually, guys, you know, air basically is a mixture of different gases. So, of course, if you check um, the apparatus, you find that the air should be cooled first of all in order to be liquid, and then that liquid air will go through this fractional tower, and finally, all the gases will be separated according to the difference in their boiling point. So, here you can find nitrogen above top one and then argon, oxygen, captain, zinc, and so on. So the whole process here guys is called fractional distillation. So the first process here should be fractional distillation. Fractional distillation. Okay. Second one, how can you separate the individual lines in it? Um, if you check uh, the process here, here we have like this is a uh, black ink, and finally we can get different colors of ink. So, actually, guys, the, the process here is named chromatography, it's called chromatography. So, the second one is gonna be chromatography, okay. Next one, how can you produce ethanol from simple sugar? We need to get uh, ethanol from simple sugar, so we should ferment sugar itself. So by using fermentation process, we can get ethanol. So actually the process is going to be fermentation. Fermentation process. Next one, how can you obtain water from aqueous sodium chloride? Actually guys, here you should take care because here we need to obtain water from aqueous sodium chloride because in other question we should obtain sodium chloride itself not water and of course they are two different processes here in case of you want to obtain water so we use the following apparatus so we should heat this is salty water or water with salt and then here water will be evaporated and then water will be condensed through this condenser and finally we will get water itself the whole process now is called distillation you can say simple distillation you remember the fractional one this is simple so you can say simple distillation or you can say only distillation so it's a distillation or simple distillation okay next one here how can you separate the precipitated formula when aqueous silver nitrate is added to aqueous sodium chloride take care guys here's the word the precipitate uh, precipitate means it's insoluble and because it's insoluble so of course we can filter this insoluble substance so for this purposes we use the following apparatus remember yes and this is generally guys for any insoluble solid when it's uh, within a liquid so you can uh, separate it by using this this is filter paper this is filter funnel finally water will pass and only the uh, insoluble solid will be filtered here in the funnel. So the whole process is called filtration. And this is, as I said later earlier, this is a general process. You can use it for any insoluble solid. So the process here is going to be take care of this word. Keyword here is precipitate. So you can say it's filtration. Filtration to get this precipitate. Okay. Question two here we have this is give the name of the process that is used. This is almost the same idea of the previous question. So this is how can you obtain water from aqueous sodium chloride? Once again, this is the same question. How can you obtain water? I think now everyone knows how can you obtain water. So we say, yes, exactly. This is distillation or simple distillation. Distillation to obtain water. The next one, how can you produce a lead from molten lead? To bromide. Actually, guys, this question is not included in this topic. Actually, this is in electrochemistry, so this is the answer is going to be electrolysis. So, however, I can cancel this one right now. So, the next one is C. 
How can you um, separate an insoluble solid from a liquid? Insoluble solid. So basically, I've said the general idea to separate insoluble solids. So, yes, it should be exactly filtration. Filtration to separate any insoluble solid from a liquid. Uh, the next one, how can you separate a component of petroleum? Um, you know, guys, components of petroleum, they are like a mixture of uh, liquids. So, of course, we can use the same idea, like exactly like liquid air. So, it's going to be, yes, remember, fractional tower. So, it should be fractional distillation. So, it's going to be fractional distillation. Okay, uh, the next one here, how can you separate a mixture of colored dyes? Remember the question also mentioned in this one, colored dyes. So once you see dyes or colors, so we can separate them by using the technique of chromatography. So this one is going to be chromatography. Okay, question three, here we have um, mixtures can be separated by physical processes. A sequence of physical processes can be used to separate common salts with a chloride from a mixture containing sand and common salt only. So take care here we have a mixture of sand and common salt. Uh, give the order and the correct scientific term for the physical processes used to separate the common salt from the mixture. Take care guys, please hear the word order and the check with me now the uh, four. Here we have four marks. Um, here we have three points, one, two, three. So, of course, three processes you should mention and take care the fourth mark will be for the correct order or the correct arrangement. Okay, so if we have, this is sand particles with salt particles. So, remember that uh, here, guys, we have sand. They are insoluble, you know, and salt is soluble substance. So if you have soluble and insoluble together, so the first process you should use, it should be dissolving. Dissolving. So in this case, salt only will dissolve in water, and then you will have a precipitate of sand. So sand will be a precipitate now. How can we get rid of this precipitate? Remember, we said a little earlier that we can do filtration. So you can do filtration to obtain sand. And finally, you will have a solution of water and salt. So how can we get the salt only? So remember, we can't use distillation because in this case we will obtain water. But here we need to obtain salt itself. So in case of obtaining salt, actually we need to make only evaporation process. Only evaporation. So, okay, next part here we have the boiling points of four different alcohols, A, B, C, and D, are shown. So, you see here different boiling points of different alcohols, A, B, C, and D. Uh, a student suggested that the apparatus shown could be used to separate the mixtures of alcohol. So, this is the apparatus. Here we have this is hot water, and the flask. This is electric heater, uh, fractionating column, and here this is X, mixture of alcohols, A, B, C, and D. And here this is the liquid. Okay. Okay. So the first question is: uh, Apparatus X needs to have cold water uh, flowing through it. Draw an arrow on the diagram to show where the cold water enters apparatus X, and also name apparatus X. So let's come back to apparatus X. So actually, apparatus X it's, it's clear. It's condenser. So the apparatus X is condenser. You know, guys. And now we should also draw an arrow to According to this point, draw an arrow to show where the cold water enters. So here, actually, we have two openings, guys. The one at the bottom and here the one at the top. So which one is going to be more appropriate? Just remember here, this is the best for the papers within the condenser. So it, it's clear, guys, this is the final position. And afterwards, the liquid will be taken here. So it's more appropriate here for the uh, cold water to be supplied through the bottom one rather than the one above. So we can remove this one above. So the correct answer will be the one at the bottom.
because this is the final position for the vapor to touch the condenser before be before being obtained. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, next one. Part of the fractionating column is missing. This means that the experiment will not work. Draw the, on the diagram the part of the fractionating column which is missing. So let's check. Yeah, here this is fractionating column. So actually, guys, you see this part is open. So of course, it will allow gases. It will allow also uh, uh, vapors to escape. So we should close this opening by using this stopper. So you should draw this stopper to close the fractionating column in order to prevent the gases and vapors from escaping and to direct them to the condenser to get them finally. So this is the next part, which is, this is stopper, okay? Okay, the next one, explain why the experiment will not work with this part of the fractionating column missing. Okay, so as we have said, so this is because, because gases and vapors escape. Okay, so here we have two marks, one mark for this point and one mark for drawing stopper above. Okay, next one, travel I suggest why a Bunsen burner is not used to heat the flask. So let's check. Okay, here we have electric heater um, rather than Bunsen burner. Uh, so if you check, you will find the guys within the flask, we have a mixture of alcohols. And you know, alcohols are flammable liquids. So they can catch fire. So it's going to be very dangerous to use Bunsen burner. So instead, it's more safe to use electric heater, of course. So we can say because mixture of alcohol is flammable. Okay, okay, the next one, a hot water bath can't be used to separate alcohol C and D. Explain why. Okay, let's check. Here we have, this is the hot water bath. This one. And here this is alcohol C and D. Yeah, here it's a clear C and D, the boiling point, this is 122 and here this is 160. And you know guys, for water bath, so it boils at only 100 degrees Celsius, not more. So of course, hot water now or this uh, water pass can't be used for separating these alcohols. This is because we can say water path boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So it cannot exceed and second point so C and D alcohols have boiling points more than 100 degree Celsius. Okay? Hope you find this helpful. Thank you so much, guys. See you inshallah next week.